All right, I have a very strong conviction about this Tyrese situation. So I had to make a video about this. I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it, but I was like, yo, I have a very strong conviction. So I got to share this word that God has put on my heart um, when it comes to this Tyrese situation. Now, I don't know if y'all have seen this. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you have because this has been all over the Internet, all over the news. Um, you know, this is like top tier celebrity drama that everybody likes to talk about. And now I'm participating in it as well. But I do have a word that I want to speak um, through this situation. So just a quick little background, and I'm going to play some different videos just to give you some different context, just in case y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So Tyrese, obviously very successful uh, singer, actor, um, he got married to this woman named Samantha Lee. Now, Samantha Lee, this is no disrespect to her, but I don't think she was really anybody when it comes to like status, celebrity, you know, she didn't really have a name before she got with Tyrese, right? And she got with Tyrese, and I guess going into the relationship, she was this very humble um, woman who didn't want very much, who didn't need very much to be happy, but ultimately fell in love with Tyrese. And, you know, that's all that she wanted was, you know, to have a family and be married and, you know, do that whole thing. This is according to Tyrese, right? But over time, things started to change. There was a situation that happened where um, she just up and left. She up and left. I guess she put a uh, COVID mask on the ring cameras in the house, the security cameras, took the one-year-old baby, and ultimately divorced Tyrese. Now, this whole situation, it wasn't um, an abusive situation. It wasn't, um, you know, anything from my understanding that couldn't be repaired from my understanding, right? And I, I don't know everything. This is just based on, you know, he said, she said information. But it wasn't anything that couldn't be repaired. And now she came out and she said, hey, I kind of regret divorcing him. And I would consider getting back with him, right? Now, he's already long moved on. And extremely upset about this whole situation. And now she's asking for like $20,000 per month in child support because they have a child together. I think she's like five years old. Let me play a few videos. Um, just to give y'all some idea of the characters involved here. Um, before I get into to really what I want to say, you know. Um, so this is the primary clip that went viral. So Samantha Lee, I guess she's like a life coach now. Um, this is the primary clip that went viral just this week of her talking about the marriage, all right? Do you think you still would have actually gone through a divorce? Not that time. Okay. Oh, I've never said this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what we do. This is, this is the... exclusive, baby. <laughs> the truth about the matter is that if I had different people in my ear at that time, I would not have made that decision, no. And that's the truth. I was very, very hurt. I was very angry. And I remember when I made the decision, I was like hysterically crying mm. on the phone with my attorney. I was extremely emotionally intoxicated. Mm. I'm an extremely emotional person, but I know women specifically, there will be moments where they'll be like, I'm ready to be done. I can't stand this. He don't do this. And we're just focusing on these things. And because you don't have a certain person in your life to check you and say, sis, what about this? What about these strengths? What about what he's not doing? That can get you thinking about the positive aspects of this person that you may not be thinking about when you're upset. And so in those moments, you need somebody for that person. Yeah. So that was one clip. And then this is another clip where she um, is talking about the effect that it's had on her daughter um, since they got divorced. I was raised in a divorced home mm -hmm. and it was a high conflict divorce. And I didn't want that for her. So I think it's harder for me because I made the decision. And gosh. <clears throat> Take your time. I don't even want to paint myself like I'm a victim because I'm not a victim. I'm just hurting that I made a decision that does affect her. And that's why I 
would say to any person, if you're highly emotional and you're all over the place and you're going left and right, that's not the place to make decisions. Yeah. When, when I was mad, I wasn't thinking about how like her not having her dad in the house would affect her and getting used to seeing a mom on her own. When I know the value of having a man and having a man present in the house. Mm. So those are two of the clips that went viral. And that sparked a lot of controversy and that sparked controversy. <laughs> that sparked a lot of con 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 controversy, controversy. It sparked a lot of that. And Tyrese got involved and he responded. Now, this uh video I'm going to show you just a disclaimer. There is strong language in this video. But I wanted to play it, and I'm not going to play the whole video because it does get off the rails. Like, he starts talking crazy. So I'm not going to play the whole video, but I'm going to play enough um, for you to understand the points that I'm going to be making because he's talking about some biblical themes here. And he's specifically talking about pastors and pastors' wives who were trying to counsel his ex-wife into not leaving. And he mentioned some other scripture as well that I wanna uh, uh, talk about after the fact, but he is cussing a lot. So I just wanna make that disclaimer before we get into it, all right? But let's go. All right, um, hold on. Look, man, I was not going to respond to this video of my ex that's now gone viral. She is loving it. Congratulations, you went viral again over something else that you said because you're trying to build up your YouTube page and get your followers up. Listen, man, listen. If you had people in your ear that influenced you into leaving your husband and your one-year-old child, your innocent one-year-old child, we both were divorcee kids, grew up in toxic environments, torn in between our old family, new family, stepfather, stepmother. That's a life that we both lived. And you packed up a one-year-old, put a COVID mask on top of the rain cameras, and I was literally in an airplane on my way home to fight for my marriage and my family. You're heartless. None of your friends recognize you. This is all about money. If you had friends in your ear, you're lying, you're gaslighting, you're playing. The only person that was in your ear was your mama. Her name is Patricia Randolph. You didn't have people in your ear. The amount of people that was supposedly in your ear, you also had a whole lot of people like Aventer Gray, Taffy Dollar, Creflo Dollar's wife, who married us. You had a whole lot of people in your ear telling you that you're about to do something stupid, impulsive, and y'all are actually not going through anything that would make you wanna leave your husband. Let's go even further. When Aventer Gray and Pastor John Gray were having their own marital issues at the time, you arranged a therapy session with Aventer Gray at our house. And when she walked out of her therapy session, she walked into the foyer where the bumblebee is and there was 50 boxes with like seven or eight people there packing up all the shit to leave the house. And I was in an airplane on my way home to try and fight and save our marriage. So if you had people in your ear at the time, they must be still in your ear because you're still trying to get $20,000 a month for a five-year-old, you make $160,000 a year on your own. This is all a game. You're clout chasing. You're something that I don't even know. A simple woman, not into materialistic things, don't, want, don't care about fame and mansions and popularity. You're everything that you told me and all of your friends and loved ones that you wasn't. If you wanted to be famous, boo-boo, that's all you had to say. You didn't have to play this game that you wasn't. Now you are here playing on single mothers. And okay. they're. I'm going to skip ahead because I'm going to try to spare y'all from some of the cursing because he really goes in. Um, 
but I thought there was a, a very interesting part around the 10 minute mark. Um, I'm going to just go right here. Hopefully it's, he's not saying something too wild, but um, let me play this part. If it ain't about Samantha, it ain't about nothing. I guess being in a relationship with a big personality and the entertainer, which she signed up for, made her cave, slowly but surely caved. Her mama was the one who was like, oh, we did it. Like, we hit the lottery type shit. Gas the Her mama was. And then her mom got threatened and was insecure about the marriage and the relationship that we have. In the Bible, it says, leave and cleave. You know about that scripture? Or are you going to keep skipping over that every time you do an interview? Leave and cleave to your husband and your family. Your mama never wanted you to leave. Okay. So I spared you a lot of the uh, details in that response video because there is a point where he just goes absolutely berserk on her. Um, calls her a psychopath and calls her, you know, all this type of stuff, right? And I think they're both in the wrong. I think Tyrese is in the wrong. I think his ex-wife, Samantha Lee, is in the wrong. And it's so interesting, um, the counsel that was involved in this situation. He mentioned um, Creflo Dollar's wife, who I don't know what her name is, um, but she was somebody who was in the ear of his uh, now ex-wife, um, I'm assuming trying to you know save that marriage. And then John Gray and uh, Aventer Gray, I believe that's her name, um, were also involved in the in counseling um, you know him and his ex-wife trying to repair that situation, which ultimately you know didn't work out. Um, he mentioned leave and cleave, right? That Bible verse. I think we got to remember something. As men, we're called to be the leaders of the household, right? The Bible says that wives sh should submit um, to their husbands. Wives should sh uh, submit to their husbands, right? But if you really think that through even deeper than that, the husband has to be submitting to God first. If the husband is not in, in, in complete submission to God, in hearing from God, in getting this discernment and wisdom from God on a daily basis, if the husband is not the minister of his household, making sure that the spiritual health of his household is on point, it's going to be hard for the wife in that situation to submit if that is the case. And I don't know the full dynamic. I don't know the full situation. I'm just looking at the hurt that is still present in this situation because obviously Tyrese is still hurting from this situation in some way, shape, or form. And I guess you can't really blame him. That's human nature. His wife just left him and his family. Now he's dealing with all these legal expenses up to a, a million dollars in, in legal expenses. And then on top of that, she's also wanting to get X amount of money per month in child support. I understand from a human standpoint, that's a natural response to still have some negative emotions, but I don't think the right answer is to air that out on the internet. And I understand that she took initiative first and that she made this information public and that she went onto a public podcast to air out, you know, quote unquote, dirty laundry. And you're simply responding to what she already did in public. But still, I don't think that's the right move. I don't think that's the right move. The Bible also says that husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Because at the end of the day, you know, Tyrese, that's still the mother of your child. And will always be the mother of your child, right? And you might have a day in the in the future where you completely forgive her, 
where you don't even feel the same way that you felt in this video. And I, de I didn't even play the whole video because I think that that day is going to come where Tyrese is going to forgive her and possibly regret the statements that he made for the sake of his child. And I think that's why he took this video off of his Instagram page, because originally he had posted this video onto his Instagram page, but then he deleted it. He took it down. So I don't even want to play the full video because it gets that ugly. But I think it's going to come a time where you're going to forgive her. And there's going to come a time where you're going to have to have a conversation with your daughter about these statements that you were making. And that's why I think it's so important that before we expect a woman to submit to us as husbands, we have to be submitted to God fully. And then she can submit to us. Because really what's happening when a wife is submitting to her husband, the wife is really submitting to God. And I'm not saying that the husband is God, but I'm saying that the command to, to submit to your husband is coming from God. So the wife is submitting to God through what the word in the Bible says to submit to her husband, and the husband is submitting to God as well. But I said they were both in the wrong, right? I said they were both in the wrong. So his wife um, or ex-wife had mentioned the emotional turmoil that she was in that led her to divorce Tyrese. And ultimately, she was led by her emotions in that situation. You know, here's the thing. We got to be very careful who we're choosing to enter into a marriage with. Because statistically speaking, marriages are extremely unsuccessful. It's probably one of the worst, quote unquote, ventures, like business ventures, quote unquote, because you know how people like to say that, you know, marriage is a business. It's probably one of the worst ventures that you could get into because statistically, it's probably going to fail. And when you don't have God at the center of your marriage, the possibility for your marriage to fail is infinitely more higher because there's always going to be a back door. If you don't have God at the center of your marriage, there's always going to be a back door. And when things go bad, when you have a disagreement, when you have an argument, when you get sick of that person, when you, when you don't want to be around that person, when you, when you realize, wow, this person is messier than I thought, when you realize, wow, this person is low-key rude sometimes, this person is like low-key doesn't, you know, do what I want you know, this person to do in order to, you know, make this relationship successful. When you start realizing all of the negative, which that will come because we're human. When you start to realize all of the negative around your relationship. If you don't have God at the center of your marriage, then you start to you, then you realize, oh, I could just leave. I could just find a better person. Why, why, why am I sitting, sitting here torturing myself and my children? Like, we could just go and find somebody else. And you know what the Bible says? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? The heart is desperately sick. What is the opposite of sick? Healthy. The Bible is saying that the heart is not healthy. In fact, it's desperately sick. So we have a situation where Tyrese's ex-wife, right? Tyrese's ex-wife admitted that she was in such a bad emotional state that her emotions drove her to make a decision which she now regrets. Right. You can't trust your heart. You can't trust your emotions because the Bible clearly tells us that your emotions are rooted in an unwell place. 
And when you lean on your emotions to make critical, life-changing decisions, it'll never pan out. It'll never pan out. And when you're talking about the decision to leave your husband or stay in the marriage, that's a life-altering decision that will have impacts on your entire family for generations. She even said it herself, and it's so interesting. Did you catch this? Both, both Tyrese and Samantha, they both said that they grew up in a divorcee household. So now you already have generational curses at, at, at hand. You already have generational curses that are preying on the downfall of this marriage. And yet they still find themselves in that same situation, knowing how hurtful it was when they had to experience it as children. I saw something um, on Twitter, this tweet right here. It said, Tyrese uh, Gibson says his ex-wife assured him before marriage that she didn't want his money. She signed a prenup. And basically she, you know, just loved him for him. Let me, let me play this clip real fast and then let's talk about it. Hold on. This was a woman that was very simple who I met in a $12 sundress and prided herself on being simple. And I don't right. care about money, stars, celebrities. I don't need to live and be around. This is not, I'm a simple girl. Now you want $20,000 a month for a one-year-old? Mm -hmm. Now you've hired three law firms? My prenuptial agreement <clears throat> was so detailed and so extensive. My lawyer whispered, she had her own lawyer to negotiate on her behalf. Mm -hmm. My lawyer, Tanya Mitchell Graham said to me, I can't believe you got her to sign this. And I said, well, the reason I got her to sign it is because she said to me specifically, this ain't mine. Mm. That's your publishing. Those are your cards. It's your house. Mm. And if we ever separated because <clears throat> I didn't get in this for any of that, I will sign every piece of paperwork that reflects that I don't want none of that. Mm. To then want nothing more than to show a nigga that that's all she wants. Here's what frustrates me so much about that. Tyrese says his ex-wife assured him before marriage that she didn't want nothing. His cars, his money, his, his uh, publishing checks that he probably gets monthly or however often he gets that right. Um, he didn't want access to she didn't want access to any of his wealth that he had you know acquired on his own. She just wanted him for him. Right. Here's what frustrates me so, so, so much about that. All of that is worldly stuff. A prenup. The possibility of, oh, if we happen to get divorced, then let's make sure up front that the money is going to be taken care of correctly and that you're not going to just drain me, drive all my money. Let's, let's take care of all the financial stuff and all the business stuff up, up front just in case we happen to find ourselves in a situation where we both said that we never want to be in because we know how hurtful that situation was when we were in it as children. But let's make sure just in case that all of these boxes are checked off. Let me just make sure just in case that you're the person that's not going to request all of these things if we happen to get divorced. Let me make sure you're that type of person. Why is that taking priority over making sure that the person has a relationship with God first? That should be the number one priority. If you really want to protect your marriage, if you're really concerned about protecting your finances, how come you don't make sure that the person that you're entering into a covenant with has a relationship with God first before they even knew you? Because when you have a relationship with God before you get into a marriage, God starts to reveal to you your own deficiencies, your own faults, where you fall short. God starts to show you all the things that you need to work on as a person. God starts, starts to show you all, the, all, all of the reasons why you're not the best partner in a relationship either. God, God starts to humble you. And you go into that marriage with discernment with wisdom, 
And you go more, more, more importantly, you go into that marriage knowing how to hear the voice of God. Because a lot of people say that they're Christians. A lot of people say that they know God, but they don't know how to hear his voice consistently. When you've spent time with God, you know how to, you know how to hear his voice consistently. And, and, and that's why it's so important that you have a relationship with God first before you get into a marriage. That's the first thing that you should even be looking at before attractive, uh, like if you're attracted to that, to that person, that really shouldn't even matter, to be honest with, with you. We put too much weight on that as, as you know, in, in society. We put way too much weight on attraction. Are you spiritually compatible? Do you both submit to Jesus Christ? Do you understand that God is, is above everything in this marriage? Do you understand that ultimately our counsel comes from God and nobody else? Yes, we can have people around us who can help us grow and, and, and walk in our relationship with Christ, but ultimately our counsel between me and you, husband and wife, it comes from God. That should be the most important thing in a relationship because when God is on top, when you put God in his proper place in a marriage, which is on top of the marriage, at the top of the pyramid, governing everything, then you know that back door that we talked about, it no longer exists. So when things go wrong, when you have issues, when you have problems, when you have disagreements, you can't just leave. You can't just walk out. You can't just continue the generational curses that have been plaguing your family for decades. You put an end to it right then and there. And you work through it by way of the counsel of the Holy Spirit. You remember that verse I showed you? How the heart is wicked and how, how the heart is sick. This is Jeremiah 31, verse 33. It's talking about uh, the new covenant. So it says, for this is the, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall, shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least to the greatest, declares the Lord. See, when you become a believer, God writes his law, his perfect law on your heart so that you no longer have to operate from a place of sickness, but you can operate from a place of love, true love. But if you're not tapping into that, if you're not building that relationship, you won't have access to that because you're still gonna be living in your flesh. You're gonna be saying one thing with your mouth that you're a Christian and that you serve God, but you're still operating from your flesh. From your flesh. You're not operating from the new heart that God has put in you, that God has written on your heart, the law that God has written on your heart. And even further than that, verse 34, it says, no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. I have nothing wrong with counsel. Tyrese was saying, oh, you know, my, my wife was, was getting counsel from this, this pastor's wife and that pastor's wife. And look, that's fine. I mean, I, I might have chose different pastor's wives, but look, that's on you. That's fine. I have nothing wrong with you receiving counsel. But ultimately, you need to know that the only counsel that truly matters is the one that comes from God. But if you don't know how to access that in your relationship, because you don't know how to access that personally, then you're destined to fail. You're destined to fail. I 
I heard this. Um, I was listening to this podcast. I think it was uh, Anton Daniels. He has a YouTube channel. And he was talking about this situation, right? Um, and he was talking about the fact that Tyrese's wife wanted to leave, right? Like she wanted to leave. And, and, and Anton was saying something to the tune of like, you know, if a woman wants to leave me, I'm not going to hold her hostage. I'm going to let her go because that's the, that's the decision that she made. I'm going to let her go. And I think a lot of men, they share that same opinion, right? It's like the, the, the masculine thing to do if a woman wants to leave is to let her go and then go get a new one. Like that's what the world has taught us. But when, when you think about marriage and how sacred marriage is to God, if I'm ever in a situation where I feel like my wife or, or if I'm in a situation where, you know, God forbid my wife wants to leave me, you think I'm just going to sit back and just let her walk away? There was a reason why we got married in the first place. There was a reason why we had children in the first place. There was a reason why we came and stood before God and got into this covenantal agreement in the first place. Assuming that there's nothing unrepairable from the standpoint of assuming that there's no physical abuse, um, uh, emotional abuse, or anything of that nature, which from what it sounds like, that wasn't the situation with Tyrese. I don't care if my wife is leaving. I'm, a, I'm fighting for that marriage and I'm repairing the marriage because that's what we are called to do as husband as husband as husbands that's what we're called to do love the church love your wife as christ loved the church right we're talking about the same god who leaves the 99 to get the one you can't even leave and go get your wife and repair that relationship and i don't know how hard he fought for his marriage he did say that he was flying back to fight for his marriage right so I'm not trying to bash him too hard on that, but what I am saying is if it was an opportunity to repair that relationship, take that opportunity to repair that relationship. Release yourself of that pride, release yourself of that ego, and do what you have to do as a man to repair that relationship for the sake of your child, for the sake of breaking generational curses. Do what you got to do. And I guess the reason why I'm like, I'm going so hard is because of the mention of God and because of the mention of, 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 you know, being a Christian. And Tyrese was just posting on his Instagram about Jesus just this morning. So it's like, if we're going to do these things and if we're going to come out publicly and set a flame to our, the mother of our, of our child, can we operate in more discernment? Can we operate in more godly masculinity? The example that we have uh, um, of marriage in today's world is such a terrible example. It's such a terrible example. The most important thing is that you each have a relationship with God separately. When two people have a relationship with God separately, and then you merge that, and now you have two people who are fully submitted to God, there's no way that you could break that, no matter what happens. Because you know the true power of love. You know the true power of forgiveness. And ultimately, you know how flawed you yourself is. And, and will always be. And you know how much grace you need. And you know how much grace God provides you. So why wouldn't you provide that same grace to your partner? And like I said, I think they're both wrong in this situation. I'm not siding with one side or the other. But I think we need to get back to what marriage actually is supposed to be a covenant made before God, 
right? So that we can produce a family, so that our family can glorify God, so that we can break generational curses, so that we can create disciples and be the salt of this earth. And although there may be disagreements, there may be moments where you want to leave, there may be moments where you're sick and tired of this person, you have a greater purpose. It's not just a fleshly purpose to be satisfied in your flesh, but you have a greater calling to be all that you can be spiritually. All right, let me stop. I'm getting too preachy. I'm getting too preachy. Look, once again, no disrespect to either side. Um, it's just human nature, you know, no disrespect to Tyrese, no disrespect to his ex-wife. Um, you know, I just hate seeing marriages fall apart, um, especially when it involves children, um, especially when, when, you know, so many people are looking at these situations as like an example, um, you know, like, let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments, like this video. If you like this video, I'm out, y'all.